and I thank you for that yesterday, Megan. But now that you're part and parcel of the much bigger picture, Megan, and you've moved up and you knocked uh, someone out of the box, suddenly I'm your enemy, is that right? Well, tomorrow it may be you, Megan. Tomorrow they may take you off the air for something you said. Be very careful which company you associate with. They may not all be in, in your corner. It's an important article. People have written, to fraud book, truth is now hate speech, and I will never join fraud book. And someone then wrote, Facebook community standards are anything that embraces perversion, Islam, and the liberal agenda. Facebook is just a waste of time with their founders supporting these terrorists, someone wrote. He's an American traitor along with the liberal pansy. Ooh, that's bad. Anyway, you can see people are angry. Very, very angry. And it's all because Zuckerberg wants to do business in the Arabic world. It's exactly what happened to me in England. Now you understand what's happening to freedom of speech, freedom of, of the press. I got to tell you something. I am so glad that I have a publisher who went to bat for me with Government Zero. I had a fight. I never told the story, but they didn't want this book's uh, title. They didn't want the one they really didn't want was Stop the Coming Civil War. They just wanted it to be the savage truth. And I had a fight with the publisher a long time to make them publish it to stop the coming civil war. Government zero was not so much as an argument, not, not as much of an argument. They understood completely about the third world dictatorship uh, that is, is emerging in our country, ruled by government zero, which is absolute government and zero representation. So I, I thank Hachette, Center Street Books, for publishing that book. It's in every bookstore in America. It's a miracle. You think this is going to go on forever? Do you actually think you're going to see freedom of the press in your lifetime disappear? You're already seeing it disappear. Take a look at what just did to me on Facebook. That's all. WMAL, Cliff, welcome to the show. What's on your mind? Michael, I want to thank you first of all, brother. Uh, got uh, Government Zero, was riding on a plane uh, back from Costa Rica. I'm 65 years old. There happened to be a young uh, black male that was sitting beside me uh, in his 20s. I asked him if he knew anything about climate change, he kind of shrugged his shoulders, and I said, oh, okay, you've been watching what I'm, what I'm reading here. Look at this chapter here. I've got about 20-some pages for you to read. He read them, and it changed his mind. Okay, well, because, because you had I, because, to... Because, I don't, look, we, let's be clear, Cliff. We don't know each other, right? We never met. No, we never met. All right, and so you went and bought the book, and you read it to this kid on a plane, and when he read the, my statements and, and he saw the references, he suddenly opened his mind up. I read it with the quickness, and I was taking it with me to share with a couple of people and uh, was going through some preparation because I like to converse on things that I know, and I was uh, impressed by how well you documented that book, and I shared it with this young man. Okay. Now let me. Ask, was he afraid of you, Cliff? Because you're bigger than him. No. I'm joking. Absolutely. Come on. You, you know, you sound like a big guy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> big guy on a plane reading a book that you don't agree with. You certainly would agree with him right away. <laughs> I'm just joking. Come on. So, but what, what I wanted to share with you, Michael, one of the things you might be in, in the midst of this morass that we're facing, uh, I, I can share with you. I'm not afraid of any man. Uh, I'm, I'm a, a Christian. And uh, was in law enforcement uh, 38 years. 20 God bless you. Department right outside of the District of Columbia, Prince George. Well, yeah. you, got, you got my support, my friend. You're the thin blue line, and I'm glad you, that you're in it. Well, God got me through that. Well, at any rate, I was, I was, I guess I was kind of crazy. I went into a high school and was running security at a high school for about uh, 16 years. And the reason I'm calling in is because seven of those years with the police department. I was in narcotics. One of the things you said that you might want to reconsider is that any group of people or subgroup within a group, if they're experiencing a problem, they are going to be an integral a part of the solution. Any solution that comes out, they're going to be an integral part. That Muslim brother that I actually called, and I said brother because he's, he's in the United States, he's a, he's a, a U.S., okay, U USA. So he's my brother until he shows himself otherwise, okay? One of the things you need to remember is that in narcotics, you have sources of information. 
Some people commonly call them snitches. Now, the difference between a snitch and a confidential source of information is fundamentally that a snitch is intricately involved in the behavior that you're looking at. Ah, in other words, it's a terrorist who got caught who was turned. But a confidential informant is someone who is not uh, a terrorist and simply wants to tell you information without, without getting exposed, right? If, if we, right, exactly. Hold on. No, this is very important. So you're saying to all the Muslims out there that they could become confidential informants without being seen as snitches. That is so great. Stay on the line. A breakthrough on the Savage Nation. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. Right, here is a crazy e -E development in this whole Muslim terrorism story. It was just posted today by Laura Italiano of the New York Post, December 10th, 2015. You ready for this? You're not going to believe this story. I told you that they're going to be annihilated. I told you ISIS will be destroyed and wiped off the planet. They have now provoked everyone on the planet who has any power. Here it comes. El Chapo tells ISIS his men will destroy them. The world's most wanted drug lord has declared war on the Islamic State. Promising the terror group's leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, that his narcotics cartel will wipe them off the planet. I'm quoting now. El Chapo says, my men will destroy you. In an encrypted email that was leaked to a cartel link blogger in Mexico. News of the threat purportedly issued from wherever El Chapo was hiding since busting out of a Mexican prison in July was first reported in the U.S. by cartelblog.com. <clears throat> El Chapo, whose real name is Joaquin Guzman, Leader of the Sinaloa Cartel. Well, here we go, folks. A little breaking news. Remember the opening of the show? I talked about the Mexican who converted to Islam, who bought the rifles for the Muslims, who uh, conducted that terror attack in San Bernardino. The 24-year-old gentleman uh, named Marquez. My son is a good person, says mother of man who bought guns used in the San Bernardino attack. The mother of the man who purchased the weapons used to carry out last week's deadly shooting. The LA Times leaves out the word Muslim, of course. At a San Bernardino social services center, again, they leave out how many people were slaughtered. Said today that her son was a good person, despite growing concerns about his links to the man at the center of the terrorist attacks. Armida Chacon, oh, wait a minute, if his name is Enrique Marquez, how could her name be Armida Chacon? It's getting interesting, by the, more interesting by the second. Armida Chacon sobbed as she spoke briefly to reporters in Riverside, saying she, she hadn't been in contact with her son, Enrique Marquez, since December 2nd. The day his friend Saeed Rizwan Farouk killed 14 people at the Inland Regional Center. I don't know how this happened. My world is upside down. She saw my life has changed Wednesday. So how does she know he's a good boy? They did, None of them know how. They don't know how it happened. They have no idea. They were radicalized. They didn't know it happened. They didn't know. They had no idea. They couldn't tell. They went to And they don't know. How could she not know that the guy wasn't involved with something fishy? First of all, if a, a Mexican who's usually, uh, they're Christian, very strongly Catholic, if he converts to Islam, I mean, the mother would say, what's up, man? What's up with that? What, what's going on with the beard? Chacon was outside with one of her other sons cleaning up the broken glass and twisted panels of their garage door. Oh, here we go. I see. It's sympathy for the mother. Here comes the L.A. Times. The damage occurred when federal agents raided their Riverside home. Oh, isn't that shocking? Well, that's an attack on minorities. I mean, look, the FBI broke open their garage door to look for evidence. That's a case for, let's see, Al Sharpton, the Justice Department. This could be over an overreaction of the police. Absolutely. Loretta Lynch, where are you now that we don't need you? I mean, was this necessary to break the garage door of this poor Mexican woman's garage? Damage occurred when federal agents raided their Riverside home over the weekend. As Marquez became a central figure, blah, 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 blah. Deadliest terror attack on U.S. soil since September 11th. That's what it really is, by the way. 
Now, here it comes. <clears throat> Mark has a 24-year-old cycling enthusiast. <laughs> That's being repeated over and over, cycling enthusiast. He took three bike rides probably in his life. Now, one more on saw a bicycle in the garage. He's already a cycling enthusiast. Now, don't you love that? Uh, what do you think about your neighbor, Marquez, who became a Muslim who gave him the machine guns? Well, well, he has a bicycle. Oh, cycling enthusiast. Breaking news. Cycling enthusiast who, want, who wanted to join the U.S. military. Here, wanted to. Now already he's a war hero. It's like a gangbanger that's killed by the police in the downtown section somewhere. They say he would have been a medical student. He wanted to be a medical student, but he was only a, a drug dealer as an interim vocation on his way to Harvard. <clears throat> he later gave the weapons to Farouk. Farouk. King Farouk. King Farouk. When I was a little boy, there was a King Farouk in America. He was always seen in a picture in the Daily News. I liked the guy. He was a big, fat guy. He did nothing for a living. And they always showed him. They would catch a picture of him sitting at a club in the middle of the day getting drunk, King Farouk, in Manhattan. I liked that idea. I was 11. I had to schlep to school and learn. I didn't want to go to school. I said, Ma, how do I become a king? I mean, what do I do to sit on a bar stool in the middle of the day when I'm a man? And have guards and this and that. She's well, just become president. <laughs> no, she didn't say that. But King Farouk, he died young from uh, overindulgence. The timing of the weapons purchase is of great interest to the FBI investigators. Okay, Federal Bureau of Islam. That's a bad joke. I got to be careful with that one. Uh, Farouk abandoned his plans to launch an attack after a FBI task force arrested several California men. Okay, blah blah blah. Here we go. As he as she comes through the wreckage of the garage door, attention Loretta Lynch, wreckage of the garage door, Mrs. Chacon eventually turned to the reporters camped out on the street and agreed to an interview if the cameras were turned over. Uh-oh, Larry. Larry, get ready. Marquez was his mother's right hand at home, helping take care of his brothers, Chacon said. Normal 24-year-old, love to hang out with friends and like to go to parties. My son is a good person. Then how do you explain that he became a Muslim? How could he hang out and go to parties if he had become a Muslim? She said, I don't know anything to the reporters. Nothing. I know from nothing. But he dummied up pretty quick. Right after the shooting, Marquez went into a mental health facility. Somebody advised him on that immediately. The minute he, he they traced the guns to him, he already went to a bug house. Mental health facility. Probably called one of the lawyers for the uh, the shooters. And they said, check yourself in here. We got a doctor in there who does Medicaid fraud for us. He has, he has a mental health facility. It's in the house next to you. There's actually no patients and no clinic, but we make $14, 3000000 million a month on it. Marquez has been cooperative, blah, blah, blah. After speaking to reporters for 10 minutes, Chacon turned the walk back inside the stucco home. Stucco home. Let's see. One more line. Uh, she was still crying. Oh, that's so touching. L.A. Times staff writers James Queeley and Richard Winton contributed to this report. This is Journalism 101. As bad as it gets. Now, one of them asked, how, did, how could he be a good boy? Nothing changed. He was a Mexican kid who became a Muslim. That's kind of odd. It's very rare, by the way. The mommy dearest didn't know it. Anyway, he said, he said, I just deconstructed a new story for you. This would be a good shtick for television if I did it once in a week. Uh, there's a network that wants me to do this once a week. Just read the newspapers and do my, my take on them. I'm, I probably, I'm, I'm kind of thinking of a little television once a week. Small, little small operation. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. I got the same callers now for an hour and a half, so I can't take any because I we've covered all the topics. And I don't want to bash Muslims here. I just don't want to do it. I just don't want to do it. I'm not, it's not going to get us where we want to go. They're going to only typecast us. I said I would do a show Trump-free and Muslim-free, and I have been unable to do that. So now let's go to the most... Uh, important man in the history of the world in clip number eight. Let's listen to what he has to say uh, on this day of December in the year 2015. Clip eight. If we fail to answer those who wonder if they're truly equals in their communities or in their justice systems or in the job interview, He's we betray he a new, a new the efforts road. of the past if we fail to push back against bigotry in all its forms. Oh, please. Get off it already. But we betray our most noble past as well if we were to deny the possibility of movement, the possibility of progress. The possibility. <laughs> if we were I gotta get to that let down. I'm cynicism practice. consume us and fear overwhelm us. 
He's got several different accents he uses, like all of the deceivers. You notice I don't change my accents. I am what I am. Whether 